you know what, lads? I, I thought about this long and hard, and I've come to the conclusion that I'll cry if we sign Ivan Tony. Don't <laughs> no. want him. I just don't. I'll cry with happiness, mate. I don't want him. I mean, I've tried. I've tried to do my level best to be objective to say he's a Liverpool fan. And every way I look at it, it just I'm just coming up with Ricky Lambert all over again. He's like, way better than Ricky Lambert. He's better man. than Ricky Lambert. Yes, he is better than Ricky Lambert. But I'm just saying it just feels like we've given up. It, it was just... I, 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 I can't get on board with it. I can't. We signed him and nobody else. I agree. I'd be right in your ballpark, Craig. However, if we sign him as an Origi replacement to battle with Jota and then we sign a main man, I'd love that. I think that'd be fantastic. What if we signed him and Dan Juma? Or him and Gnabry. That's op- That's options, man. But it's no. not great options, though, no. is it? That's it is. Not like- that's not good enough. That means well, Diogo Jota is not good enough to be the main man. But who's going to be our main striker then? Well, it'll be Jota rotating with Tony slash. And that's not good enough. Else. That's not good enough. That's embarrassingly poor. For like we're, we're going up against probably Neymar, Mbappe, Messi, Vinicius Junior, Benzema, and then a midfield of probably Shoemeni and Camavinga. And we're trying to keep pace with Manchester City, who've just signed Julian Alvarez, uh, Erling Haaland. And we're trying to, you know, somehow justify to ourselves that Ivan Tony and Danjuma or Ivan Tony and Serge Gnabry are going to keep us up there challenging. I think let's be real. Come on, like I know a lot more than turn players into better players, but I think it's a lot more than that. I think if if we get players working in the right system, we can challenge a hundred percent. But can we obviously, obviously, we will be aiming higher than that in an ideal world. But it's not an ideal world, unfortunately. If, we, if it, but if it's it was a world bad. all of our own making, Chris. Is this it? is what pisses us off. I've been warning about this situation all year, and I've been told to shut up. Everything will be in hand. The contract will be renewed. You're only just stoking the fires. And yet here we are in the summer. Man, I look like he's off, and we're still unaware as to what's happening with, with Mo. And now we're sitting here trying to justify why bringing in the English Chris Wood and Dan Juma would be potentially good enough. It's I understand, but it's surely just adding to a squad that's already won two trophies this season, right? I don't I understand that Mane's going, right? But surely it's just creating more competition. No which will then make literally Dan Juma and Tony is only replacing Mane because Mane plays both sort of but left and striker. Yeah. It literally you're not improving there, which is the I don't understand why Liverpool can't just go out and sign a ready-made star. Like, the last time we done it was Thiago, and before that was a long time ago. Just go out there and buy a fucking star. Spend the money. Stop with this fucking shit business business model. And that's exactly what Man United done, and look where they are. No. Different. It is. Different. It is. We're allowed, you got to be careful, about how, you, you gotta be careful about how you invest, for me. You've got to be careful. You've got to get the right players. Yeah, the good and, and good players. Um, yeah. I like all these little, like curveball ones but sometimes you just need to say fuck it let's buy a big boy i mean i've seen and I'm, i know you gentlemen spoke about this yesterday i've seen martin terrier's name being mentioned from people that i know who watch french football do genuinely say is a very very underrated or undervalued player maybe somebody like that who we don't think of like we would have watched quite a bit of ivan tony we would have watched quite a bit of serge glabry and we've seen a relatively good amount of dan juma but I can honestly say, hand on heart, I couldn't give an opinion on Martin Terrier because I, I, I've never watched the lad kick a football. But um, I'd feel more comfortable if Klopp and all had the data and went that route because I know it's it's data driven and not just making up the numbers. See, it, it's really sad because lads, let's be honest, none of us six months ago would have accepted any of these names we're talking about now because we thought we would have our boys renewed and maybe we need to bring in a centre forward. And now I feel like we're already starting to pave the way for excuse making and subpar signings in a summer where like we've dropped off now already. Immediately we're we're behind the chase and pack. I, I, I do agree. I think I think you have to judge a signing after like after a season. I, I don't know what a subpar signing really looks like when they've only just signed. Um, people were questioning, oh, Mo Salah, he never did anything in England. He had a great couple of years in Italy, granted. Why have Liverpool spent forty million pounds on him, and then all of a sudden he exploded into this this star? I mean, Andrew Robertson was relegated, Gini Vijnaldum was relegated, turned into I don't stars. Think there was that much kick up when Mohamed Salah was signed. I don't remember much. There was around it. rival fans. People was, uh, why did not we sign Julian Brandt? He's more proven. 
I remember yeah, that. Well, he I remember was the target. There's, there was no denying that Brandt was the number one target until <coughs> Pep Linders, and I think those with the stats were pestering and pestering Klopp to say Salah, 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 and they got their way, and Salah was bought in. And Luck has been an undoubted success, no arguments, but he's the unicorn. He's not the regular. He, he's a unicorn, that signing. like that's that's You're not going to get anyone, that lucky again, I would suggest. Did anyone envisage Sadio Mane having the impact he did? Yes. From... Really? I, 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 more so than, than Salah. I was absolutely more comfortable when we signed Mane. Now, Salah's been better. I will be the first to admit that. But yeah, no, that was one signing I looked at and went, yeah, I can see Mane in our team. He, he, look, Sadio was very good at Southampton, but no one envisaged him becoming a world superstar, I would say. As that, for that's... actually, while we're on Mane, uh, the Athletic have reported that Southampton would receive a fifteen to twenty percent uh, fee of anything over what they what we paid from, which is thirty four million pounds. So if Mane moved on from that, uh, they'd get what well, if we sold them for forty, they'd get fifteen twenty percent of the six million. So not a huge amount, but still something to keep note of. 